Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Nick here, back with a brand new video. I hope that you guys are all having a beautiful day today. Uh, I took a little bit time out today, pretty much to spend some personal time with family, uh, as today was my dad's birthday. But we are back at the grind. It is currently 2 a.m. and I am feeling fantastic. So, first and foremost, like I said, I couldn't cover the news uh, in real time today. I do apologize, but I do want to talk about some XRP news overall. So first and foremost, uh, before we jump into this video, I do just want to ask if you guys are enjoying the daily uploads, uh, definitely leave a like. And if you guys are brand new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and turning notifications on. So let's get into it. So today we got uh, a pretty much a reply to Ripple's third reply, if you will, from the SEC. And it was a, p a pathetic response overall. Uh, basically, this is pretty much what it says. Uh, Ripple's argument boils down to this because none of the SEC's prior digital asset cases involve the exact same identi uh, identical facts as this case. Ripple lacked sufficient fair notice uh, such that it cannot be liable for violating Section 5's strict liability provisions. Then we also see here Howie and its progeny's flexible rather than static principle would be nullified by a ruling that fair notice defense can defeat any claim involving an investment product that is not identical to one previously deemed a security. And then we also had, of course, James K. Fallon saying it's a pathetic response overall. And you know what it is? Uh, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not the fact that it lacks the idea that it's the exact same argument or identi identical facts, if you will. Um, it's the idea that this case is nowhere near, you know, close to half of these cases that they were mentioning, right? They were mentioning, you know, the Chipotle case. They were also mentioning a few other cases overall uh, that didn't really pertain to Ripple and what Ripple was doing anyway. So for them to pretty much bring up the idea that, you know, hey, their argument boils down to this because, you know, pretty much none of the prior digital asset cases that the SEC mentioned were pretty much identical. It, it just doesn't make sense. Um, I think that Ripple's argument is very clear coded. And I think that it's, you know, cut and dry, you know, at, at the end of the day, they're not trying to, you know, say, hey, you know, I don't think that we should be identified as the bad guy here because, you know, what we did wasn't wrong. They're actually backing it by statistical facts because in the last, you know, cases, and I believe that we even see that mentioned here. So yeah, we, we see it here, right? The regulatory agency went on to claim that the abundance of case law interpreting and applying Howey and other additional guidance issued by provided the blockchain firm all the notice that was constitutionally required. But we already know that they were meeting with the SEC on a weekly basis. Uh, David Schwartz actually approved this and said that they were. So why weren't they providing this information to Ripple the entire time? You know, they're, they're trying to say that at this point they they pretty much told them exactly why what they were doing was you know pretty much illegal uh, they were saying that it, they pretty much should have known that from la like past cases which it it just doesn't make any sense at all uh, but i also want to watch this with you guys because this is very interesting so this is hey sec news remind us why ripple is being sued again now all credit goes to mr d crypto uh, but this is very interesting uh, overall, and we'll, we'll talk more about why it is. So let's watch this together. One second. Let me turn it up for you guys. Bitcoin offerings are a ways people have raised money. Vitalik Buterin did this to raise his $18 million in 2014, if I might my year right, uh, for the Ethernet. By 2016, somebody had raised $150 million in an initial coin offering. The concept is basically, I want to get proceeds for a network I haven't yet built. I'm going to build this network, but instead of selling equity to a venture capital fund, I'm going to sell a bunch of tokens that someday, hopefully, will be usable. It's a neat way to crowdfund. And foremost, they're trying to enhance the value of the tokens they sold because often they still own tokens. There are thousands and thousands of private placements that go on every year in the U.S. We want them to go on. We want people to raise capital, but we want them to do it right. right. What ICOs do is they take the disclosure light benefits 
of a private placement and then add to it the public general solicitation and retail investor promise of a secondary market without registering with us. And folks somehow got comfortable that this was new and it was okay and it was not a security, it was just some other way to raise money. Well, I disagree with them. So, yeah, I mean, this is talking about ICOs, right? And we already know that Ethereum raised an ICO that Buterin pretty much benefited from overall. Why isn't Ethereum in court, right? Because it would only make sense if Ethereum went to court as well. And, you know, Ethereum was being sued the same way that the SEC or the SEC is suing XRP. Yeah. Uh, so it, it just doesn't make sense. And then we also have, you know, because that was Gary Gensler talking, right? That was Gary Gensler talking about, you know, Ethereum pretty much, you know, selling ICOs. Uh, and, you know, for them to pretty much say that Ripple was doing the same thing, Ripple already had the network live. The XRP ledger was already live at the time of the initial coin offering. Uh, so it doesn't make sense at all for them to pretty much say that, you know, Ripple was, you know, pretty much promising that, they were investing into something that they were working on, which would be a security, right? A security is when somebody invests in something that is being built or is in the process of being built. Uh, the XRP ledger was already built at this time. So, you know, what they were doing was technically not illegal at all. And then we also had, you know, Jay Clayton himself saying, you know, we want people to have ICOs. They, they just want it to be under their discretion overall. Uh, which, again, you know, going back to the idea of David Schwartz saying that they were meeting with the SEC on a weekly basis, uh, you know, there was no pretty much talk about, you know, what they were doing was illegal or not. But then again, if you go back to one of my initial XRP videos, David Schwartz also said that two years down the road, which it was two years down the road, pretty much almost exact uh, from that initial video that he, he was talking about in an interview, um, that the SEC will most likely come after regulations or talk about possibly suing a cryptocurrency and what is the chances that xrp is that currency but let me know what you guys think about that i i don't think that ethereum should get off clear from this because it, it's obvious that what ethereum was doing was the same thing that xrp was doing except xrp already had the network live uh so technically it wasn't an ico uh, or anything like that so it, it just doesn't make sense to me uh ethereum should definitely be getting sued as well but I mean, this pretty much tells us, hey, you know, if Ethereum's not a security, then neither is XRP at the end of the day. So let me know what you guys think, definitely, because I, I thought that was very interesting overall. Now, we also have this, which is also very key for this overall uh, case. And this is, you know, Ripple's new lawyer, if you will, backup. Uh, and we see, you know, st student attorney. I represent a client seeking civil protection orders, drafted petitions for a CPOs, and uh, represented clients in TPO and CPO hearings, as well as in pretrial settlement negotiations with respondents. Then we also, over here, we see um, conducted research on wide range of legal issues from antitrust law, sanctions, investigations, and enforcement, environmental law, financial institutions, regulation, and pro bono criminal defense. Now, I thought this was very interesting, but for the most part, I mean, you know, this could just be like, you know, this guy saying here, she doesn't seem very experienced, though, student interning for five months and summer associate for three months. And yeah, it does make sense. But uh, it, it is very interesting if you really want to go into, you know, that speculation sort of idea uh, where, yeah, this possibly could be something like, hey, backup is here for a settlement or something like that. Uh, but you know, it, it wouldn't make sense. Um, you know, like I said, but this is from you know, January to May, 2016. So technically there are about five years into the game, if you will. Uh, now this one, yeah. Uh, this one again is like about six years technically, because if you go and look at the dates, you know, the dates are there, but possibly three months, uh, and five months. I think that they're probably, I, I don't know how this works, but maybe that's the time that they were working with xrp or ripple um i don't know if somebody responded to him maybe so th those are only partial segments of her uh resume so yeah i mean possibly like i said more experienced 
uh, but I thought that was very interesting as well. Uh, definitely interesting for this case because it could add some value overall to Ripple's legal team. But anyways, let's go to the chart and analyze the chart as well. So currently we are holding, and this is for most assets too, uh, we are cu currently holding that support zone at about that 85 cent level, uh, if you will. And you know, XRP is currently at 86 cents. We are trending in a little bit of a downhill slope. Bitcoin is doing its thing. Bitcoin dominance is rising and so is Bitcoin, but at the end of the end of the day uh, alts aren't going to move much with it until it breaks key resistance levels so right now it wouldn't be too bad of an idea to keep some fiat on the side because until bitcoin actually breaks above support it would be better to hold it to actually see where we're going to be going because we could get some juicy buys like i said this level here down here this chop level from 62 cents to 85 cents is not out of the water right and this goes for a lot of assets, including HBAR and stuff. You guys already know, one of my favorite holds. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we could definitely see this chop zone be targeted once again. I know that a lot of people hate me for saying that. But like I said, we are in a relief rally where, you know, we could top out a little bit on Bitcoin at around that 45K mark uh, before we hit, you know, 47K and get rejected off of 47K because 47K is a big target point right now. Uh, and if we do get rejected off of it, then we do go much lower. If we do break above it and hold, then we most likely will go higher. Now, I mentioned to you guys, I will most likely take some profit at around that $46,000 level, uh, just in anticipation for a rejection or a breakout. I said I might buy in a little bit higher than what I sold at because, hey, sometimes you do got to buy high because, you know, you got to take a little bit of an L uh, because, you know, sometimes it could play out in your favor, too, on a dip. And, you know, I will tell you guys, you know, sometimes that is the game that you have to play. You know, if you want to make some better trades and stuff, sometimes you got to sell resistance and buy support. I mentioned it many times that that's a key uh, factor in this game. So it is what it is. Uh, we'll have to see how the market plays out. Uh, I definitely think that we're out of this in two months. Uh, June 18th is coming very soon, seven seven days, so one whole week away. Uh, let's see where we are in terms of that. We should be in a little bit of a recovery state at that point. Like I said, it's not us out of the water. I'm just saying that we're pretty much in a recovery state now, and we could be out of it by then, uh, which will push us into a foundation building segment that could last about two months. So with that being said, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do want more free content, you guys can follow me on Twitter at NCashedOfficial. You can also join the Discord down in the description below for free. And also, if you guys are having a beautiful day, definitely comment below and let me know your guys' thoughts on XRP overall and also how your day is going. Uh, but nonetheless, I hope that you guys are having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out.